Hey, thank you for coming to my channel. This is Hot Mess and Hot Glue, and I am Lynn. Let's have some fun. Project number one, we're just gonna go ahead and deconstruct this Valentine's Day sign. I am admittedly not great at faux finishes, so you'll see me here going ahead and I'm just gonna take the easy way out and apply some contact paper. Now that the contact paper is on and secure, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the wreath portion. I'm gonna use a 3D wreath form and I'm going to use two of these rings. They were spray painted in a matte finish. The color was, I believe, River Rock. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sandwich that little board in between the two rings, use a little bit of hot glue, but I'm also going to use some floral wire to get a really nice tight spin. I use these hemostats back from my working days and I'm just giving them a really, really tight tail. We used to call them a pigtail and you just kind of tuck them in and it keeps everything really nice and secure. So it's just a secondary measure. That way we're not just relying on the hot glue. All I'm doing here is just playing with some florals, trying to find out what looks good. Florals are not my strong suit. I mean, what do I do? I can't do a faux finish and it doesn't seem like I do florals very well either. Hmm, should I rethink this? Nah, it's still too much fun. We're gonna keep going. So, these are just some boxwood picks that I had gotten from Walmart. Um, I've actually only bought two of their picks, but I've used not even one of them in its in its entirety. Sorry for the skip there. Um, and I think I only paid like $2 for it. So it's definitely worth its while. And it's a better quality than I have found that I can find at the Dollar Tree. So when you really break it down by project, I still feel like this is a very cost-effective material, even if you're not getting it from the Dollar Tree. So now I'm using the same floral wire to also attach the florals and not just attaching the two wires together. So the next part, I went ahead and used my Cricut and I made just a simple vinyl seine for the front of it. And now I know not everyone has a Cricut and so if you don't, there, I have actually a couple other ways to transfer words and some projects coming up. But I really like this, I love the way it looks. It's very modern, still very floral and minimalistic, but let's just move on to number two. So we've got this board that I had found at the Target dollar spot. I think I paid, I wanna say I paid $3 for it. However, I'm almost certain that I actually got it when it was on clearance maybe. I, I don't wanna be held to that one. I might've just paid the full $3 for it, but it is double-sided. And so to me, that's really two projects. So I feel like it's only $1.50. I'm using these really nice window clings. Um, actually, these ones are the wall stickers and not the window clings from Dollar Tree. And I just really loved the saying on this. I wanted to kind of carry out that whimsical uh, feel of the font so I kind of carried that through my original plan was to use cork and then I remembered I had this faux leather ribbon that I had gotten from Hobby Lobby and I thought that would be a really nice accent for the black lettering so I go I went ahead and I go I cut the half circle out and this material works really well with hot glue and so that's that's what I used to uh, stick this onto the frame. I didn't use much. I just went in small portions and I kind of tried to smear and flatten the hot glue so that it wouldn't end up really clumpy and leaving any kind of visible marks through the front of the leather. So now that that's on there, I just went ahead and flipped the board over and I'm just trimming off the excess. 
I found these really cute uh, rose picks at the Dollar Tree. And so I'm just kind of deconstructing those. I do find that I get far more realistic and better looking arrangements when I'm using any florals or greenery if I just kind of take them apart instead of just using them as one whole piece. So you'll see me here just kind of putting it together. I had no rhyme or reason. I just saw it, figured I would do what I thought looked good at the moment. And I was actually pretty pleased with how it turned out. just adding a couple tiny roses just to add a little bit of color but look how this turned out i think this is really pretty i love the contrast and i really love the color more fun with project number three so this one was fun um i just took this dollar tree sign and i took the plastic off now using this little scraper if you go really slow and you use gentle pressure and you just kind of work the blade underneath the writing it peels right off quite easily Once I got the vinyl wording off, I just used a little bit of window cleaner to kind of clean the glass and get any smudges off. Now I'm gonna take these rub-on transfers that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to just kind of create a little bit of character to the front of this glass. I did mention that we're working with glass here, right? I think I mentioned that. I just wanted to double check because I'm pretty sure that in the midst of this, I forgot. And hmm, what happens if you're just not very gentle with glass? I can't think of the word or the reaction that it has. Yes, I know. This is what happens. You shatter your project. <laughs> so it definitely didn't stop me. I just said, whoops, I was glad I didn't get cut in the process. I took all the glass off and then I went ahead and found some really cute scrapbook paper that I had in my stash and I decided to improvise because I have just the cutest little vision for this project and I was not gonna let that little mishap stop me one bit. What I like about this mishap is it's also really good proof on why when I go to the dollar store, I buy two, three, sometimes four identical items. Because if I didn't have multiples of this cute little rub or tra rub on transfer, I wouldn't have been able to just kind of pick up where I left off. So hopefully my husband sees this and he'll start to understand. Yes, I do need 12 of those sticker packets. On the first project that I was showing you guys today, I used my Cricut to create some vinyl lettering. And on this one, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to recreate it because the Cricut is nowhere near me. So it was really fun to kind of improvise with those 12 packets of stickers that I have in my stash. Thank you very much. However, I liked the way that the letters were shaped but I really wasn't a fan of the color. So I grabbed my Arteza paint markers, found a cute font of stickers, and I just decided to kind of go over the lettering in the paint marker. So it's gonna change the color of the lettering, obviously, from this really shiny, shimmery silver color to a black. As I'm working with these smaller letters, I just realized I wanted something that was gonna stand out just a little bit more. So then I grabbed a different pack of stickers that I had in my stash also. And I liked the capital letters on this one. I thought this was really gonna stand out better. And so I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just taking my black paint marker and I'm going over it to cover the green of the letter. So I don't have green letters on my sign. I will have black letters on my sign.
Now that those letters are painted and they're completely dry, I'm just peeling them off and I'm gonna stick them on in your standard sticker fashion. Um, I did decide to use the smaller stickers also, so I kind of did a combination of both the capital letters and the small letters as you'll see here. I am not known for being a patient crafter. When I've got a vision and I'm kind of in the mode, I just like to go. So I don't always do the proper measuring and leveling of letters, but I learned the trick that if you put the first letter of the word in the last letter of the word, and then you fit the remaining ones in the middle, you can typically get a more visually pleasing and even spaced sticker. What's fun is I actually learned this from watching many, many videos of my friend Heidi Sambal. There was only one capital E, so I figured the font was easy enough. I, I should, after all these years of crafting and just general handwriting, be able to somewhat copy that letter E. And so that's what I did to kind of replace it. Now, all we have now is just the scrap book paper because I broke the glass. Remember that? So I just took this scrap of just thicker cardboard that I had used from a project probably the day before, and I'm just using it to um, kind of just give a little bit more stability. So I just go ahead and hot glue them to the back of the frame. Again, this way it's not as flimsy and then just a piece of paper on the back of the frame. Now I'm just using my little rotary tool to go ahead and trim the excess so that nothing is hanging over on the front of the picture so you don't see that part. Now for a minute, I kind of felt like I should just leave it as is, but then I did remember I had that really pretty uh, pick that I was using in the first project, thought I would just kind of freeform it, see what I liked, and add just a little bit of fresh greenery to this just to kind of add that extra visual effect to it and kind of a 3D effect to the, how many times am I gonna say effect? Hmm, well, let's see what effect this greenery gave it and see if you like it. Originally, I thought I was gonna go ahead and do just a full wreath around the same to kind of match the rub-on transfers wreath. But then as I was working with it, I just really liked the idea of just kind of draping it around the sides just to kind of keep it minimal. Again, I'm not, I'm not the biggest on bows and a bunch of uh, frilly greenery in my home decor, so I didn't want this to stand out as if it were not actually a part of my home decor. Okay, we'll head into the last project. This one's really straightforward. This is a Dollar Tree sign, and this is a little truck that I got from Walmart at Christmas time, and the paint color I'm using is Ballet Slipper by Waverly. I prefer to use a glue stick when I'm attaching any of my uh, scrapbook paper to any of my signs. I find that for me personally, it just works better than when I go and try and use Mod Podge. Um, I will link Kristen Kay's channel because she's actually the crafter that completely brought this to light for me. 
Now, as this last project starts to wrap up, I just want to take a minute and just say thank you very much to Miss Heidi Sambel. She is hosting today's challenge where we are just trying to come up with de uh, decorations that are DIY in the Easter and uh, spring theme. And I was one of the lucky few who was able to participate in this. I'm going to go ahead and link her channel below. Yes, she has four channels, as I had mentioned before, four channels. So I will link that below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I've had a ton of fun. Do yourself a favor and go check out Heidi's channel. If you really liked today's video as much as I did, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel grow.